It's a very welcome return for Dave Kersner from Arc of Life and many other projects and <laughs> and parts of the music world. So, welcome, Dave. Thank you very much, uh, Mark and Kevin. Glad to be here. Yes, indeed. And Mark's here as well. Hello, Mark. Hello, gentlemen. How are you doing today? Doing well, thanks. And yourself? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm doing very good. Thank you very much for asking. So now that we got the pleasantries out of the way, let's get down to business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we know from interviews and articles that Arc of Life isn't yes and was never intended to be yes 2.0. But from your musician's perspective, what do you actually want Arc of Life to be? It's not, you know, a lot of the bands slash projects that I do are led by me and I start them and, you know, kind of put together like in Continuum, for instance, is, is uh, like that. And obviously my solo stuff and, and some other things are kind of like a duo or very simple and I have a big hand in it. This is the exact opposite. This is uh, Billy and John, you know, Billy Sherwood and John Davison started the project from having material that they wrote while on tour with Yes. And on the tour bus, they were on the same tour bus. So they had, they were just writing without a plan. They were just having fun, you know, being prolific and creative. And, and then they're like, hey, you know, this isn't really, uh, doesn't really fit Yes per se, but we like it. Let's make a band. And then they asked me to join after the songs were already written and they had already started recording. And I was like the last one to be added. But I've known those guys for a long time, especially. Billy and we've been talking about doing something we've done things together before but not actual like an actual band where we're you know, it's a real band and we're in the band together. So now that I'm in the band as an actual member, um, there's a lot of exciting possibilities for when we play live and we tour, maybe we'll all get the chance to write together mm. uh, since that's kind of my main thing anyway is songwriting. So to, to have not written anything on this record, it's like I can't claim any of the the criticism or the praise. It's <laughs> yeah. like, well, you know, hey, but it's a cool, I love these guys, you know, they're just, they're buds, you know, yeah. and I met Jimmy Hahn through this project and he's just an instant pal just super nice guy and very talented musician so i just like you know being in a band and hanging out with these guys plus i'm a huge yes fan and they're kind of like the next generation of yes within yes mm. you know sort of my age group who was grew up listening to yes so i can relate to them on that level but you know anyway that's just sort of the backdrop but in terms of what i want I actually don't have pleasantly i don't have a lot of expectations which is, i think is a good thing like i don't need mm. this to be my whatever yes uh, fantasy project or anything like that. I mean, I actually do stuff like that anyway mm. with yeah. Fernando. We, we, we like sometimes go there and kind of bring the yes out, you know. Yeah. But uh, for this, I would just go with the flow and see what happens and see how much involvement they want from me. And I'm just ready, you know, when they are Brilliant. to give my best. Yeah. Um, and obviously, as you've just said, Billy J and John know each other very well from, from playing with yes live, of course. But what are they all like to to work with uh, on a musician level? You've already said that they're they're great buddies and, and fantastic people. But what about as musicians? Are they open to ideas? And uh, how do you enjoy working with them? I've enjoyed working with them immensely, especially I have more experience working with them on my projects. So, for instance, uh, John Davison guests with uh, my band in Continuum. Hmm. And he was just an absolute pleasure to work with. Just a real positive person brings his A game. He's an excellent singer. I mean, sometimes, you know, obviously when you, you get compared to John Anderson, who's just, you know, incredible and the person who, you know, was the founder, you know, co-founder of Yes and and has that iconic sound to begin mm. with, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to compare to the master. And I know that John Davison respects John Anderson as well and looks up to him and he's still his hero. And, um, and same for me, but it's not that easy to sing that high and mm. in tune and, and with all sorts of, you know, beautiful timbres. So I've been able to, and it all depends on the songwriting context, I find. Even even when I worked with Simon Collins, Phil Collins' son on, on Sound of Contact, yeah. inside the context of our album, Sound of Contact, Dimension On, where it's more prog rock and it's more lush keyboards and, and just uh, more close to the mark, on, you know, to like Genesis and Peter Gabriel and stuff like that. He sounds different than he does on his solo records. Mm. And you'll get to hear all these other, timbres and, and emotions and things. So same thing with John on that project. You know, Billy, as you know, is the king of tribute albums. Mm -hmm. And he's also a workaholic and he's very personable and he makes himself available to hire. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. people can just hire him. He's super cool. 
like and me. <laughs> you you worked with him too? Yeah, he, he played bass on my latest album. Yes. And he's cool that way. I'm not, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. But he is. And he's just kind of like one of like Fernando Perdomo, like just a session musician who loves to work, will take on anything. I operate a little differently. I'm a little more like I like to relate to it artistically. And then for me, it's not I, I like to do other work for money so that it doesn't have to be a job. I don't have to take every gig. But um, mm-hmm. but these guys are true working musicians. They don't have a day job. They don't, you know, I, I work with a software company, mm-hmm. IK Multimedia. We just announced um, a Mellotron plugin today. Uh-huh. So it's yes. very close to the world of Prague, but it is technically a corporation with an office. And I have, you know, some responsibilities there, but that's how I'm able to do what I do. What I do. But anyway, working with them, I would say that their attitude is amazing. Their generosity and coolness, given, you know, that they're in yes and, you know, been around, played with everybody, especially Billy, Mm -hmm. is, you know, pretty darn cool not to be taken for granted. And he's accessible on on social media. John is, and he's, and I don't blame him. He's just kind of like, I live my life. I don't (laughs) (laughs) get caught up in that. But Billy's a trooper, but a Starship trooper. But but one thing I will say about Billy, he's the fastest gunslinger in the West when it comes to turning around sessions. I mean, I've done stuff with him. He played on the uh, the McBroom Sisters album I co-produced uh, with uh, the McBroom Sisters back in vocals for Pink Floyd. And he just turns around and uh, tons of things on my solo album, New World, uh, on a track called Crossing of Fates with the late, great Keith Emerson and Simon Phillips on drums. And he played bass and he's just so fast. He just cranks it out. And I know I can always rely on him. I'm like, man, I need somebody to like, you know, play all the instruments mm-hmm. today. You know, <laughs> that's probably him as long as he's not on tour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, it's funny when I asked him to do the the track on my album I had expected mm-hmm. you know fully to wait like a week or so and next thing I know the next day he already's like I have the track ready here's a DI <laughs> here's the one with the effects I'm like wow that was like really quick and it was excellent it was well played and everything yeah. So Jimmy Hahn, you just mentioned that he you, he's more the newest person that you've met, like as far as the rest of the guys, um, yeah. his guitar playing, how would you rate it? I mean, do you find him closer to Steve Howe in style or Trevor Rabin, or is it kind of like a combination of both? How do you kind of rate him as a guitar player? Well, I generally don't think that way, but I can. Uh, and since you bring it up, I suppose, yeah, he is actually a really cool blend of those two with his own style mm-hmm. as well. And uh, I like that because personally, I... I love Trevor Rabin and Steve Howe. I'm like a, I'm a super yes fan in the sense, not to say that I like every album and every song. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not that forgiving. I know some fans are so loyal that they just love everything no matter what. I, I am critical. Every, all of my hero uh, musicians and bands, I feel always have to bring their A game and reach for their best. And I feel that way as a music artist myself. I don't try to rest on any laurels. Not that I have too yeah. many, but, you know, and so, <laughs> but that said, I respect them all, appreciate them all. I don't take sides. And I just, you know, so, I mean, 90125 is one of my favorite Yes records. Drama mm-hmm. is one of my favorite Yes records. Yeah. Yet, obviously, Close to the Edge is my favorite, you know, Yes record. I was at Genesis. And Relayer and Going for the One and Fragile, you know. Topographic, I have a few issues with, but I, I love it, relatively speaking. I even like Tormato. Hey. Uh, you know. <laughs> and then, you know what I mean? So, yeah. the Yes album, of course, although I hate the album cover. <laughs> but um, not that I love the album cover for 90125, but, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's so yeah anyway he's uh he's yeah i'm sure he's influenced by both and so is billy actually mm. um so uh, i and, and like i said i think you know he's just really talented i'm not as familiar you know this is the only project i've ever done with him and we weren't all in the same room this very remote type of a uh, uh, approach but when we are i bet it's going to be great and we were in the same room obviously when we did our photo shoots and yeah. stuff and, yeah. and and just hanging with him he's just an instant bro mm. and yeah And also, I kind of, I've been in the industry for a long time, and I gravitate toward when people are just no ego, you know, easy to get along with, you know, friendly, and just there's a camaraderie. You know, Mm -hmm. that's one of the things that attracted me to this. Like, if it's, you believe it or not, it's not that, oh, it's the guys from Yes Plus Me. I mean, as a novelty, (laughs) that's cool. That's definitely counts for something. I'm not saying it doesn't count for anything. I'm honest Mm -hmm. about it, but I thought that was cool. But it's the fact that we all get along. We like hanging out together and we'll have a 
fun time. Mm. And because if it was just like a bunch of grouches or something and a bunch of like bossy people, I once was, I'm not going to say the band, but I w- once was going to get a keyboard gig with a very famous band. And I heard that they treated the keyboard player like garbage and like they weren't even seen on stage and they were just kind of like, mm. you know, just a, no, no one special and whatever. And it, it, and it was a sucky gig. I mean, probably still pretty good, but, um, <laughs> but you know, and so when, I, and I, yeah, so I thought, well, a year of your life, especially with a band like that touring, yeah, you'd make some money. And yeah, I mean, there would be certainly you'd learn things and it'd be fun in certain ways, but it's not the same as just being with people you like. Yeah. And I like to work with people that I like, you know? Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Okay. Well, I've uh, really grown to like the Arc of Life record. I've, I've played it an awful lot, actually. And so I know the, the, the songs really well. It clearly has progressive rock elements. But um, also other elements, other types of music on there as well. But but for you, what makes a good album, progressive or otherwise? What kind of blend do you think albums have to have or should have? Well, no, nothing has to have anything. But if we're talking about for my taste. I think, you know, speaking very candidly, I think this album is a little risky, actually, with the prog market. I, I You know, I wasn't in charge of pretty much anything, so... I don't know if I would have the guts to put the prog year long songs at the end because that's like <laughs> torturing the yes fan of being like, hey, is this all pop? What's going on here? It's like, Be patient, man. Um, yeah. But that said, on Dimension Out with Sound of Contact, we put the 20 minute one at the end too. And we had some poppy stuff. So, and, I, and that album has been very, very well received, probably the most of any album I've been part of. And uh, so I suppose to answer your question, that was a, what that wasn't intended to be be a formula but I, I think that's a good formula in the sense that there's a balance of pop and prog there's quirky creative stuff that's unconventional and then there's something that's just like catchy and accessible you know to both genders and people of different ages and that that i like that because, not that i don't like a pure prog album or even a pure pop album to be honest it's all about the quality of the songs anyway mm. you know how memorable or the melodies um and i'm really into lyrics so mm. you know i i actually for, for me, just to be completely honest, when I work on an album, if I write the lyrics, which I didn't write any of the words at all on this album, um, and I barely wrote, let's say, the words on the Montre Vega album uh, with Heather Finlay, mm. and yeah. uh, with Sound of Contact and In Continuum and my solo stuff, I write a l- large, well, with my solo stuff, I write everything, and with Sound of Contact, I wrote a large portion of it. It's very personal to me. It's very, like, I connect with it on a, a whole other level. Whereas the, when someone else writes, it's the lyrics it's like well i don't i i'm like you i don't even know necessarily what they're singing about uh, mm-hmm. i have make my own interpretations or have my own opinions you know would i write a song about siri i don't know <laughs> if i would but you know yeah. <laughs> but billy yeah. did. and so it's like appreciating billy and going oh that's billy's you know style mm-hmm. and his way of thinking and stuff so but you know as a result though i don't feel as personally connected to the songs of arc of life now mm-hmm. hopefully that'll change though because you know like i said the, the band wouldn't even exist if the two of them weren't on tour writing together mm. and then because you know we had talked about doing a band but there's a difference between getting together from scratch uh especially with the pandemic but forget that mm. but even just in yeah. general when people live in different parts of the world versus saying hey we've got a whole album of material let's make a band you know mm. so it's a good start yeah. Yeah. but i i see like potential if it was up to me and also even like a yes someone was talking about heaven and earth yeah and someone asked me my, my opinion online, yeah. you know, and I, I like to be honest, even though I'm friends with these guys, I'm friends with Jeff Downs and, you know, I don't want to be, and also I don't want to spoil it for anyone else with my, you know, a lot of times, yes, fans and fans in general sometimes are pushy with their opinion. It's like, as if they're right and everyone else is wrong. And you know, I'm not like, <laughs> really? <that>. I understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm preaching to the choir, uh, the <laughs> choir. But I was saying like, basically, honestly, I'm like, well, I wish that they would let me produce or co-produce a yes album. <laughs> If I was producing that album, I would have had, you know, obviously, well, I would have more Chris Wire, more balls, more like, you know, instrumental bits and prog moments and, and more balance of that stuff. And I would have probably been strict, uh, even with Arc of Life, if they had asked me. But the thing is, that's just the way I am if asked. I don't yeah. push myself on them. So they didn't, obviously, you know, in either case. So, uh, and if they did, they might, they'd either love me or fire me because I'm just, 
honest and I try for the best and I push um, unless you don't need to push. And in that case, I think, um, you know, there's always room for improvement and, and expanding, you know, the palette and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So you said in the past that you would like to be involved more with the writing side of the band in the future. Has there been any kind of moves made in that direction yet? Like, have you guys have actually talked about maybe writing some new material yet? Yeah, kind of. Like I was saying before, you know, you have different roles in bands, and I, it's not my role to be the leader of this band. Yeah. Um, no one asked me to do that, so I don't need to step on anyone's toes. So I'm just the keyboard player. Don't shoot me. I'm the piano player. <laughs> um, but uh, so I've kind of asked Billy, like, so do we want to send some songs back and forth in this and that? And um, he didn't want to. Uh, he preferred, he said, no, I'd actually rather write all together in the same room and th that approach. So mm. I'm like, I respect that. I'm kind of like, oh, okay, cool. I like that. Because, you know, I'm really into songwriting. And, you know, in some projects that I've been part of, bands and stuff, I've been a little too like, okay, here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. And it's like <laughs> I get the majority of the songs on the record. And then there's like a weird <laughs> off balance. You know, and, and I don't know if he knows that or, he, or he's concerned that I'd be like, oh, God, you know, I'd be turning in all these songs that, you know, might end up tipping the balance, which mm. you know wouldn't be terrible. Obviously, the balance is tipped completely the other way at the moment. Very much his style and John, but even more his style, I would say. But I, I respect the fact that he wants to create a new animal that's a blend of all of us that would happen in the room. And that's kind of a lost art and a beautiful thing when bands just kind of were in the same room creating and the magic that happens in improvising or just bringing in like a part of a song mm. and just seeing what everyone else does with it. That said, um, in fact, that's been one of the reasons why some people ask, but like why Sound of Contact hasn't done a second record. Because that, you know, even though we brought in songs for that album, everything was cut live on the floor together, mm -hmm. uh, which is, that was, uh, and then some songs were written right on the floor and written and recorded. Like, wow. like one, like Omega Point was written on the spot, improvised, and recorded and then I wrote lyrics to it afterwards and we kind of edited out a few parts that were just meandering whatever but like that's the act, one take and that's the song so you that's special and uh, obviously you need like chemistry and these guys I have no doubt you know we get in the same room some magic's gonna happen mm. uh, with such great players and good attitudes so I'm looking forward to that but um, at the same time if they were to say to me hey uh, you know what we're trying to collect the, our best material for the next album you got anything I would totally be up for you know sending tracks in and, and i even have kind of some yes maybe like almost two yes ish tracks <laughs> that I've been, not that there's any such thing to, to a yes van but i i love yes and fernando and i and in particular i love eddie offered's style of recording production mm. in the 70s early 70s and i've been kind of slightly obsessed with the gear that they used and collecting some of it and jeremy stacy also from king crimson is a friend of mine and he's yeah really into uh close to the edge and, and that era and so we've been talking about some of the gear ad vision consoles and mm, and yeah. all sorts of you know the pi compressor and so i'm really into it and um and i love the instrumentation obviously mellotron but like i have all those things rmi hammond mini mo mm -hmm. so without any expectations for me because i'm not in yes you know that i could do whatever i want it's like yeah you know, any of us could just be like okay no one's gonna go oh what is he yeah exactly oh, that's dave and fernando you know uh, having their yes uh, moment where it's just kind of but it always has a twist it always has our spin on it you know and so i have that and I, we might even have john davison sing on it or robin shell we've been doing some stuff with him who has a great voice and sounds you know anderson-esque in that range at least yeah. so you know and I, we're not shy about just doing music we love because that's kind of how i do it now it's like i just do music because i love it I don't, i'm not trying to prove anything i'm not trying to win an award uh most original uh broad guy you know, or whatever <laughs> i i sometimes i'm original sometimes it's so transparent that i'm paying all my homage to my influences mm. and i don't care as long as my goal is to make the song enjoyable meaningful you know mm. moving yeah and you know these are just different flavors on the menu yeah well, it's fascinating what you, you say there, and you've said that, that this is not your band, you're not driving it, etc. But I'm really interested to know what you what role do you think keyboards should play in a band like Arc of Life? Um, I mean, you've talked about uh, Mini Moog, etc. Do you think that soloing or texture or both or something else, what's, what's the role of keyboards to you? Well, at the moment, it's pretty limited. I, I mean, to be completely frank, I think given the nature of this album and the record deal and the whole way it was put together 
they didn't they didn't scratch the surface of what I could really bring to the table sonically, you know, so many things. It's really kind of limited. And in that sense, it's slightly bittersweet for me because I feel like some people might go, oh, cool, Dave's in this. Let's see what he did. Hey, not hmm. much. He doesn't even like <laughs> rip out the fucking mini mode. What's going Oh, sorry. You know what I mean? So like, what's going on? Mr. Mellotron didn't even, you know, and it's like, well, I know because it's just the nature of the beast, this particular album. Um, but that said, I would gravitate toward vintage sounds and, and uh, classic yes sounds. But if they're like, no, 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 we don't want to go retro. We want to do this. I'm a, I'm a team player. Yeah. So because and one of the most beautiful things I got to say, you know, when I did Sound of Contact, we made that record in 2010. And leading up to that, we had done a few things. And but I kind of was splitting my life a little bit more, actually. Like, yeah, I used to play with Kevin Gilbert and various artists in the 90s. And then the mm -hmm. early 2000s, I kind of went, you know, normal, cut my hair, corporate, <laughs> married, you know, all this yeah. kind of stuff. And then I was sort of just doing music on the side. And then finally, I was like, no, no, I got to This is who I am. This is what I do. So I grew my hair back and I kind of just went for it. And then once I did Sound of Contact and it took off immediately, I was just on top of the world. And then it kind of crashed down to the ground for me because uh, we had some trouble between us. And I was kind of, you know, sort of pushed out of the band in a way. Uh, we, we rectified that and, and, and mended everything later. But at the time, I was like fish out of water, no pun intended, <laughs> and uh, squid out of water. And it forced me to be like, you know, I got to rely on myself and become the front man, finally. Because I write lyrics, mm. I it, just authentic to sing the lyrics. I didn't really necessarily want to be, you know, because I'm a keyboard player and you got to concentrate like Tony Banks. I always see, saw myself more like that. But I really found that I enjoyed singing my words. And I sang a lot of the stuff on, on Sound of Contact when, when Simon wasn't there and we needed to demo lyrics and things. Yeah. And I, you know, obviously that'll never be heard, but unless I cover it or do things like that, which I've done. Uh, but anyway, bottom line is I learned that, you, and this is a great advice, I think, for other musicians too, just don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, mm -hmm. if you feel like you you have a band, a project you're part of, and it naturally wants to go in one direction, if you put all your eggs in that basket, and you're like, this needs to be my prog jollies band. I need to be able to play mini mode solos. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, yeah. just make another project and do your, get your prog jollies and play your mini mode solos. Yeah. And that's how I see it. So Arc of Life, yeah. as I was saying earlier, is kind of like, if it wants to be more like yes, I have zero problem with that. I love yes. If it wants to be yes 2.0 or it just turns into that, no problem for me because to me it's like uh, you know it's it's uh, honoring the influence and keeping the torch lit. So I'm cool with it. If they say no, 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 we want to distance ourselves. We're in yes, Dave. You're not in yes. You don't know what it's like. We're in yes. We'd like to do polka rap music, and I'm like, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can always do other things like keyboard solos i was even i was even thinking about doing a, an instrumental album of all keyboard oh. craziness yeah. just to kind of explore it and have fun and and then you know that leaves room for these other projects or if like i submit a song and they don't do it, it's like okay i'll do it on my album or whatever so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so your company sonic reality or ik media has mm -hmm. made some fantastic sample libraries and virtual instrument plug-in stuff. I, it's just brilliant, some of the stuff that you've come up with. I, I really love this stuff. Have you ever assisted Yes with keyboard sounds or stuff in the studio with them or kind of like trying to get specific sounds for them or even Genesis? Because I know I've seen, I've seen some of your great videos where you show some of their vintage gear and stuff like that where you talked about it. Have you ever assisted Yes? Or I know you've assisted Genesis, but have you done anything with Yes in that way, the song? Way. Yeah, I mean, probably in a similar way that I did with Tony Banks. I've uh, helped uh, Jeff Downs over the years, um, even going back to Asia. I think the first time I helped him with sounds and software was Nation, something Nation, Alien Nation or Nation forget that album. I'm, I'm thanked mm. in the album though. It was, it was very nice of them. And, uh, you know, I, I look up to Jeff. He's even partially responsible, both good and bad for my obsession with collecting keyboards. Uh, <laughs> since Asia in Asia, it was like, Oh my God, every keyboard player was like, I need all of those. Um, uh, but, uh, the irony is actually, and, and he's so nice. He invited me to his home. I stayed with him in Wales and his wonderful wife, Martine. Mm -hmm. And, um, we, you know, we're in the 
studio install, you know, installing the software, IQ Multimedia, Syntronic, for instance, and others. And of course, he's going to love Sampletron, which was just announced today with all mm. the Mellotron and Chamberlain sound. So he doesn't even know. But, you know, he uses all the IK keyboard stuff, all of it, Miroslav Philharmonic, just everything, the keyboards. He loves it. And uh, so I was physically there. We were in his studio installing Syntronic. And two things. One, you know, we were talking about, it was just trippy, how in software, it's a collection of like 20 something uh, 23 keyboards and how it's like wow this is trippy you know he used to have all these keyboards that i wanted and now he's using my and i wanted all those and now he's using my yes. not mine not the only one but like my virtual version of it and it's like yeah. the, we're installing the wall of keyboards in his computer i mean in the future that's just trippy and then the other thing though i gotta say as a fellow keyboardist is he was showing me how he was learning relayer and i got to see a side to jeff that not many people know and that's another person who who has big shoes to fill, obviously being compared to Rick Wakeman and, and, and Patrick Mraz. Yeah. And he's a different type of keyboard player. He's more orchestral, you know, but he does the work. And yeah. I watched him do it. And it's not easy playing Sound Chaser or, you know, any of those songs. And what was cool about it was just fascinating to see. But one of the coolest things was he was a fan. He was a fan of what Mraz did. He was like, mm -hmm. just like you or I, he would go like, oh, let's listen to this part. Let's listen to this thing he's playing. <laughs> he had the isolated tracks. And I'm like, wow, even Jeff Downs, you know, looks up to others and, and just like admires them and, and wants to play it and gets excited like a kid. And I mm. think that's just so good. But anyway, yeah. Um, and, and Jeff sat in with me also uh, on Cruise to the Edge playing keyboards on my song Into the Sun while I played guitar. So yeah, I've got a great cool thing with Jeff. But, you know, not as, as uh, and, and same thing with Tony, you know, Banks. It's not like they're sitting there. I mean, I've done sessions like this with others, but it's not like they're sitting there going, hey, make me, you know, make me a clown. No, make me a bicycle clown. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, like make me like a, this sound or that sound. I used to do that years ago when I lived in LA. I'd just be a programmer and I'd come with a mini Moog and this and that. I just make sounds for for Greg Filling Games or whoever. And uh, but it's not so much like that. It's more like I just supply them with things and point out things that we make that would be good. And if they needed any customization, I could. But so can they. So it's not like they really, you know, it's it's sort of just like all the crazy collecting and legwork that I do and that the company he does and the software development and aspects of it those are just like tools and then once they have all those tools they know what they like they know what they want to do with that stuff but yeah i've been involved in that way mm -hmm. yeah well that's a fantastic story to to finish this interview with i'm really looking forward to see how arc of life develops in the future and what you can you can bring to it live and in the studio etc but for the moment thank you very much indeed dave for coming to join us on the yes music podcast you're welcome my pleasure yeah thanks dave Thank you.